Regular expressions are used mostly to validate that text is formatted in a certain way, for instance, zip codes, which is what I want to show you here. I have a little code set up so that we can test a regular expression very easily. Here's the text A, and the regular expression always starts with a slash and ends with a slash, and is looking for an A. We use the PHP method pregmatch, send the regular expression, send the text, and it will return if it found a match or not, true or false, and then I presented very nicely here. Let's take a look and see if A finds A. Yes, the text A satisfies the regex A. What if we're looking for a B in A? No, the text A does not satisfy the regex B. What if we're looking for B in A, B, C, D, E, F? Will it find it? Yes, because B is in this text. You can also say that you're looking for simply a word. Is there a word in the text? Yes, there is a word in the text. What if there's no text? Then it does not match it because it did not find a word. Okay, now let's look for a word and a digit. So we have a word here. It did not find it. It only found a word, but not a digit. If we put a digit after the word, it did find it. If we have a digit and then a word, it does not find it. So you can see with regular expressions, you can be very accurate in determining if a text is formatted in a very certain way. So let's now find out if our text is formatted like a German zip code, which looks like this. So let's say it has to be, it has to have a D, and then a dash, and then a digit, and the digit has to occur five times. So let's see if that matches. Yes. What if we have an Austrian? Zip code, no, because there is no D. So let's change it back to a D. And let's say we only have four digits. No, that doesn't match either because we specify there has to be five. Let's put back in five. So we have five again, and it works. Let's put in six. We'll put in six and test. That still works, although that's not what we want. The reason is because it matched D dash or hyphen and these five, and it was satisfied if there was one at the end or not. One way you can determine or make sure that it checks this is to say that this here must be the beginning of the line, the caret, and this here with a dollar must be the end of the line. Now, if we test it again, it does not satisfy it because there are six instead of five. If we take off the sixth one, we only have five. It works again. So you can see we're getting more and more accurate here. So let's say we want to allow Austria to be validated. So let's put here brackets A or D. So now it can be A or D. Let's check if this still works. It does not work because we, of course, put it in the text. This is a D. It goes in the regular expression, of course. So now let's test if the D validates. Yes. Let's put in an A. See if that validates. Yes. Let's put in a Switzerland? Nope. Only A or D. Okay. But sometimes, if you're just sending a letter from Germany to Germany, you leave the whole D thing off at the beginning. Let's see if that validates. Hmm, no. It should validate, though. Let's change the regular expression to allow that. What we need to say is that this whole part here with the AD and the hyphen is optional.
So we'll put parentheses around it and then put a question mark after it. Now let's test. It validates. But if we put a D in, that's okay too. Forget the hyphen. Doesn't validate. You need the hyphen in there. Okay. So actually, Austria or Austrian zip codes look like this with only four numbers. And we need to change our regular expression to accept that. So what we can do here is say this whole thing with the five digits we'll put into parentheses. And we'll put a pipe saying either five digits or four digits are allowed. And now that works. And if we have a German one, that works as well. So you can go on and on with this, making your regular expressions more and more accurate. There's always something you can find, for instance, here's a little bug. That's an invalid German zip code, which still validates in our regular expression. So you would have to put in that option as well. But in everyday programming, what I tend to do is to keep my regular expressions quite simple, just so that in two months when I look at the code again, I can understand them, or that when other programmers look at it, they can understand it easily and quickly. And so I tend to make small regular expressions, which test, for instance, in this case, I would test for an Austrian, I would have a regular expression which tests for an Austrian zip code and a regular expression which tests for a German zip code, and then write a function that says test valid zip code and then call both of those regular expressions, that kind of thing. So you can combine the flexibility and the accuracy of regular expressions with your code to make some very powerful validating functions to validate text in your programs.